theme is a very strong one, indicating where we are going, where we are going in the university, where we are going in the school of postgraduate study. The facilitators are carefully telescoped and identified to be the round point for the round hole. That is to say, we carefully chose this person knowing their hands-on, knowing their academic pedigree, knowing their worth in the area of research, and again, noting that we need a center to help us drive this. So this afternoon, we are driving new frontiers in postgraduate study, and we are engaging three facilitators to do this. One of them, Professor Obo, by the time his citation is taken, you will know that we carefully chose him. The second person, Dr. Sunday Aladele, who is currently the Executive Director of National Center for Genetic Resource and Biotechnology. And again, our own, right from home, Professor Humphrey Abiodo, the current dean, School of Postgraduate Covenant. I tell you, we are on flight. In fact, we are on 1 by 10, 2028 WCU flight. Please join us as we ride on to the world class ranking following these presentations this afternoon. Just fasten your belt. Get ready your pen. Get ready all your writing materials because your catch up moment in the area of research is now. Thank you all, and remain blessed. I'd like to bring up the Registrar Landmark University, Pastor Dr. James Ndako, for his brief remarks. A round of applause. The Vice Chancellor, sir, I to stand on already established protocols. There's something unique about the first, first matriculation, first public lecture. Whatever I think that concerns first will not pass you by this morning or rather this afternoon. It's a privilege to have this occasion holding at this period where we are enacting our vision 10 2028 and what a privilege to have the erudite scholar before us this afternoon. Please our dear matriculants Today, let's listen attentively to the lecture series from our three erudite scholars. And please, let's have a take-home this afternoon and sign our areas of research. Let's not be distracted. And I'm believing that at the end of it, all better off for it in our research and our quest for knowledge. We want to, once again, how the um, amazing Lamarck University welcome our distinguished guest. It's going to be an amazing experience for you here at Lamarck University. And we appreciate God for bringing you down here safely. I want to, at this juncture, request to rest my feet as I invite the Vice Chancellor Mike University for his opening remarks. The Registrar. Pastor Dr. James Sindako, the Director of uh, Master Services at Bank University, Mr. L.D. Fadoju, the Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, Dr. Charity Allen, of course, our able deans of uh, colleges, science, engineering, agri Mentors in the house, the professor rates. Our directors, the chaplaincy of this great university, members of Senate of Landmark University, the just matriculated postgraduate students of this great university. I want to specially recognize our invited uh, guest. Starting with uh, our own executive director, 
of National Genetic Research and Biotechnology, just for Sunday. Uh, Allah Dili, it's my pleasure to have you around, sir. Of course, Professor G. Obo, who is the director of research, Federal University of Technology, Akure. I want to appreciate the Vice Chancellor for releasing you to be part of this. Coincidentally, your Vice Chancellor and I share the same supervisors. He is the first type of that supervisor. I am the last born, Professor Emmanuel Abadide Lucas. Is the one that supervises Professor Fuape as the first PhD product. I happened to be his last PhD before retiring in 2002. Baba is not tired, still alive and well. Also, coming from our own, the Covenant, is the Dean School of Postgraduate Studies Covenant. Professor Biodun Adebayo. He is in his own realm, an erudite scholar. Outside Landmark and Covenant, we have met on many occasions. Many occasions, myself going as a PhD, he most of the time represented the vice chancellor. So I want to say we really appreciate your coming. And I want to thank my big brother now, because he called me my brother from another mother. Maybe we should say brother from the same father. So anytime he calls me that, I, know, I will say, tell him, no, we are brother from the same father. So if Covenant is doing it, we can do it. And that's why we believe here. Hmm? If not for anything, the vision is getting clearer. The confidence level is rising that Vision 10 or 2028 is achievable, is realizable. And that is why we are engaging in what is called urgency energy. You can imagine bringing three erudite scholars to make presentation in just one public lecture. These are people in their own realms that can take a day to deliver the lecture. But we just want, we are teachable. Just give us what it takes, we will run with it. Here we have what is called we own it, embrace it, and we run with it. We call it OER. That's our own version. Therefore, it is with joy and excitement that I welcome you to the postgraduate public lecture organized to mark and enrich this maiden matriculant of the School of Postgraduate Studies of Landmark. Public lecture anywhere in the world is a means by which communities are enlightened. By an expert, you can see, but in this case, by experts from different institutions on a matter of public interest, thereby lubricating the relationship between a university and its old community for the good of the entire society. The theme of this public lecture, therefore, driving new frontiers in postgraduate study, is very instructive. For we have our heart fixed on global heights. Vision 10. 2028. There are two key elements that drive revolution in higher education today. The first is an increased access to higher education for the masses worldwide. So the era of ignorance is gone. And of course, the second revolution in education is the arrival of the global knowledge economy, which means universities now compete globally in any given field of study. You can benchmark yourself using cyber tools and many other tools. So you can be in your university and know how you are performing. Right at the day when you need to wait for somebody to come and rank you, on a daily basis you can rank yourself. Now we thank God why we are doing benchmarking. We saw that Covenant is already one of 10 in 10. Because we look at uh, industrial income as presented by uh, the Director of Financial Services and Covenant beat the last 10 on that table. And so if Covenant beats the last 10, apparently is between 1 and 10, even though we have others. So what Covenant is doing now is to have a total assessment. But as far as at least one component is concerned, Covenant is already one of 10 
even in less than 10. Let's give it to God. And so, competition to assess higher education is increasing, given its prospects to individuals and nations across the globe. Thus, to have top universities that can compete at the highest level in the broader society and, of course, the economy. This is the role we set to play for our country and Africa, our continent, which informs the choice of our unique corporate niche. For there cannot be alternative to food, neither there is yet a food substituting software. Also, this underscores why food will continue to matter in all matters. Hence, our irrevocable stake and mechanized approach in addressing food needs of mankind to make living worthwhile. We cannot therefore continue to engage the challenge with the same method and expect different results. It is this hard fact that prompt our resolve for the search proving solution to food challenge the setting Africa. As a university, therefore, we touched the pathless traveled because we invent the way forward in attaining food security. We are taking the ambitious lead in pursuit of agricultural productivity and economic sustainability. Our agrarian vision is impressive, bold, and a first among Nigerian universities. The time is right for the next level of research that can improve mechanized agriculture and agripreneurial creativity from the hub of postgraduate programs. We are enriching our university by modernizing teaching and research facilities and creating a living learning campus infrastructure that promotes collaboration and community impact. We are sparking research and innovation by boosting our morale and building transformational research plans that have the potential to save and improve the lives of people around the world. It is against this backdrop that seasoned researchers and erudite scholars are invited to further educate and inspire this gathering on the selected topics, which I know will benefit us greatly. This platform, therefore, further shows that we are an ever-involving and always improving campus with lofty plans to meet the growing needs of our people. We are firm in enhancing the student experience by increasing academic and research activities both at undergraduate and postgraduate levels. I especially thank our resource person and distinguished guests. I therefore welcome everyone again to this segment of the matriculation and urge you to avail yourself with every opportunity this program offers. I wish you blissful experience here and a safe journey to your destination at the close of this program. Thank you for listening and God bless. Thank you very much, sir. We are going to the next item, which will be the session one of the lecture. And before we do that, I'd like to invite the first guest lecturer, Dr. Sunday Ezekiel Aladele, to come up. A round of applause, please. Thank you very much, sir. Please, can we please come closer so that we can enjoy the lecture more? Please, those of us spread all over. Let's come closer as a family. And those of us here, can we please spread over to this side so that we can be closely. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure to take the citation of Dr. Sunday. Ezekiel Aladele. Dr. Sunday Ezekiel Aladele started his academic career at St. Mary's Anglican Primary School, where he obtained first school leaving certificate. Thereafter, he proceeded to offer grammar school in Quara State, where he sat for the West African School Certificate Examination in 1981 with a BSc Horns in Plant Science, graduating in 19, 
87 from the prestigious University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University. Give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. Thank you. He started his career as a research supervisor with the International Crops Research Institute for Semi-Arid Tropics, ICRISAT, Kando, and later research associate with the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, IITA, between 1991 and 2001. He later was appointed Assistant Chief Scientific Officer by the Federal Ministry of Science and Technology, Abuja, in October 2001, and subsequently transferred to National Center for Genetic Resources and Biotechnology. Sunday Aladele Ezekiel was awarded a PhD in plant breeding and seed technology in July 2009. I think you give a clap of and was later appointed the executive director. That's the executive director of National Center for Genetic Resources and Biotechnology in May 2014. Professional qualifications and diplomas with date. Molecular plant breeding for crop improvement, ICRISAT, India, 2011. Plant breeding for drought tolerant, tolerance, Colorado University, USA, 2010. In vitro conservation and cypro preservation, MBPGR, India, 2008. Genetic resources conservation and use, Wageningen, again, Netherlands, 2007. African Regional Plant Conservation Strategy Course in Kampala, Uganda, 2004. Dr. Ezekiel Sunday Aladeli also got the following awards and scholarship, fellowship and prizes. Certificate of Service by the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture. Netherlands Fellowship Program Award for Short-Term Training, Kick House Fellowship for Conference Participation. Dr. Aladele is a member of the following learned societies. Nigerian Society of Experimental Biology, NISEP, Genetic Society of Nigeria, Biotechnology Society of Nigeria. Dr. Sunde Aladili has, to his credit, 30 articles in reputable journals. Eight contribution into chapters of various books already published. 26 conference papers in the book of proceedings. Vice Chancellor Sir, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please rise as I hand over the microphone to Dr. Sunday Ezekiel Aladele to deliver his lecture. Thank you, sir. Please, may we be seated. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, please permit me to stand on other existing protocols so that we'll be able to our time. First and foremost, I must appreciate the Landmark University for inviting me to this first lecture for the postgraduate student. It is my great pleasure to be here to deliver this lecture. I also want to thank Professor Remo for insisting, even though I was trying to dodge it, 
she insisted that even when uh, it was supposed to be held last November, and uh, I reported to her that please, I had chains of uh, engagement which may not have permit me, but as uh, things we work out, she later told me that uh, they had to suspend the matriculation and the lecture to January. Thanks be to God for this opportunity. And I want to also thank everybody that makes this situation to be possible. I've been asked to speak on the rules of research institutions in postgraduate studies. I, I, my slides will follow the, this uh, outline. And by way of introduction, I just picked some quotable quotes to stimulate our young PG students. According to Nelson Mandela, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Mandela of blessed memory. Also, Malcolm Ten said, education is the passport to the future, but tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it. Then, Kofi Annan said, knowledge is power. Information is liberating. Education is the premise of progress. In every society, in every family, to live is to choose, but to choose where. You must know who you are and what you stand for, where you want to go to, and why you want to get there. And I think that's what Landmark is starting off today. Already Landmark knows where it's going. And that's why uh, what a right time to do the right thing. And I'm sure the vision will even be realized earlier than that based on what I've seen. What is research institution? What are research institutions? Research institution is established for conducting extensive investigations into various fields of human engagement. An organization made up of group of genius. Well, it's nowadays because of politics and so on, you have people who are not qualified to fund a research institute. In those days, if, you're, if you are not, uh, you know, first class 2 1, you cannot find your, you know, your employment in research institution because it demands people who have native intelligence, who can. You know, really think. It's an organization made up of group of genius who collaborates on an area of research. And uh, research, we have basic research, and we have applied research. Applied research is when you are after products. Purpose of establishing a research center. What are the reasons why different research centers are established? One, to promote and facilitate collaborative interdisciplinary research activity. In any research institution, you have various disciplines, microbiologists, engineers, all of them collaborating together to achieve a common goal. Also established to enhance the research work and networking together to, to, to develop capacity and then also make the best use of available infrastructure. Research institutes are established to increase and effectively manage resources and research support for members of the institutions and then also a wider university community. When I was growing up as a young scientist, what we hear is research and development. But later, it's discovered that there are so many researches that are on the shelf. Now the new slogan now is 
they search for developers. R for D. I, I was in a forum in Lagos where the industrialists were complaining. The scientists on their own side were also complaining. What was the complaint of the uh, scientists? That they were doing research and these industrialists, they still go abroad to import a lot of things. And the industrialists are now saying also, your researches are not meeting our need. That's where R4D comes in. Even from the beginning, and I want to say that the postgraduate students, if you want to be a star, look for a window, look for uh, you know, an aspect that is, you know, that is not well researched into. It may be difficult, but put your head into it, and you will discover in the years to come, you will benefit from it. Not only that, it provides training in research and related skills, especially for students, and thereby enhance the academic program of their constituent academic unit. Research, is, research institution also contributes to the university's strategic educational and research mission and to support synergy between research, teaching, and learning. It transfers and mobilizes knowledge gained through research for the benefit of society via a variety of mechanisms as appropriate. It also enhances the reputation of its members, the constituent academic unit, and the university through the quality of its work. There are some journals today, the moment they discover that a, one of the authors comes from a particular research institute, automatically they know that they will not even you know, uh, put in more effort, much effort to be able to read because they know that the quality of materials coming from this institution, the quality of research coming out of this place is, is, in, no, is in no doubt. And that's why the university and the research institute will be able to work together. It also serves as an effective platform for knowledge dissemination, exchange, and dialogue. No matter how intelligent an individual is in his own field, you still need interaction with other you know, disciplines. And with interaction with research institutes, you are, you are able to gather you know, experts in various fields and be able to learn and also enhance the quality of your work. Briefly, let me talk about types of research institutions in Nigeria. Uh, to the postgraduate student, we have over 60 research institutions in Nigeria, which spread across medical, agricultural, science and technology, educational, and social economy. Also, we have uh, other areas of research institutes in Nigeria, so that when you are developing your research proposal, you are, you are thinking of who to collaborate with, who are they, who are, who are, where are you going to get materials, and who are you going to later work with. Even after your graduation, where are you going to also, uh, you know, get job? These are, these informations are very, very important. Uh, I've listed some of the agro-based research institutions in Nigeria. You have Cocoa Research Institute of Nigeria in Ibadan, and they are given mandate for genetic improvement and production of cocoa, cashew, cola nut. If you are in the agricultural, Sorry, I, I may be mentioned more of agriculture because I'm a plant breeder by training, uh, but I will also mention some other areas in engineering because I know uh, we have postgraduate uh, students who are engineer who are you know in the engineering uh, department. We have NIHOT, National Institute for Agricultural Research, that does do research only on vegetables, ornamental plants fruit and spices. We have Robert Research Institute in Benin, Nigeria Institute of Oil Palm Research, Knife. Then you have National Center for Genetic Resources and Biotechnology, more plantation You have others, Ekcha Research Institute in Mukuri, National Root Crop Research Institute in Umudiki, focusing only on root crops. Also you have National Theory Research Institute focusing on the real crop, sugar cane, and then some oil crop, soya beans, soya beans. IAR&T, that is Institute of Agricultural Research and Training, which is also embedded with 
Obafemi Awolowo University. We are into researches into enough soil management, maize, and farming systems. All these places you can get a, a, a lot of information regarding your regarding your Student, you have Nispre, that is national, uh, you know, storage product research institute. There, you, you know, how you fabricate the machine. And so you also have Nispre, that is New Busa National Institute of Fresh, Fresh Water Research Institute. You also have National Institute of Oceanography Mar Marine Research. Then if you are an uh, animal scientist, you have NAPRI in Zaria, dealing with studies in animal breeding, animal nutrition, and so on. For medical, if you are into microbiology, biochemistry, you think you can partner with is NIPRI, National Institute of Biological Research. Nigeria, then also you have NIMA, that is National Institute of Medical Biology. That deals with researches in various important important area. We also have Firo, Federal Industrial Research Institute in Oshun. They are into biochemistry. All those you can partner with them. You have, you have others, for instance, you have Nibri, National Institute of Building and Road Research Institute in North You can always have people you can you know, work with. Why do we need to establish to establish education? We need to establish social study. study helps in the development of specialized skills, professional as professional versatility and ability. At first degree you are given general but for you to really be focused, you need to graduate study. It helps students to possess quality for good leadership, cross-cultural communication, problem solving, and team teamwork, which are highly valued by professors. General undergraduate level at you know before you get to graduate level, you do a lot of work. But when you now you are now focused, postgraduate training educates students to be able to address the specific issues of the national problems that is the wider enterprise challenge. Don't just look at the, the general thing people are doing to promote postgraduate students. If you want to create a niche profession in the future, you want to be renowned, look for you for you know an aspect of your field. Key into it, you may have to do extra work. You will be happy for it. Also, postgraduate student studies offer chances to develop beneficial connections with the posted students in workshops and educational conferences where they meet with experts in their domain. You can uh, do go forward. Maybe some of us are married. Go for you will be able to then also be able to meet people. Also, it also helps students to stimulate their intellect and delve deeper as they conduct their personal research in specific areas. Before I go to the roles of research institutes, which is the major part of this presentation. As a postgraduate student, make sure you have rules. Yes, the supervisor will do their best. But if you yourself you don't have a goal, you know, you know, but you do have a goal, it will help you. Not even during your graduate training, but later in the future, when you join the industry. Or you decide to come back to university to do your work, it will help you. Because if you, have, if you see 
many of our senior colleagues who are professors today is because they have to go. They, 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 they had many uh, students who were in the postgraduate school to get it. Some of them could not go ahead. With your vision and your goal, they would do it. The roles of research institutions in postgraduate students' training. Number one, research institutes accommodate postgraduate students in their research activity. And that is what uh, I know, and that's what also I practically also enjoy. My master's degree was just an aspect of a bigger project, which means I didn't spend a single cup. But leveraging on an aspect of a bigger project I was able to run program. Here you have a PhD student who was doing his field work at Nagra, and with that he has access to some of the resources and was able to already is finished now from the University of Ghana. Not only that, research institutes have availed the postgraduate students opportunity to use their laboratories and other facilities. Here you have the students from Ghana, sorry, from Nigeria, taking his PhD from the University of Ghana, but now going to do part of bench work in India. That is one, because he has chosen a crop that Ikrisat taught, and it also fit into their you know, mega. Project. And that's why, in the choice of your topic, in the choice of your research questions, make sure you leverage on available resources in all these research institutions. Not only that, research institutes provide platforms to facilitate scholarship for higher degrees and further training. I know of many students who, after their master's, or who came to IIT, or even where I work, just for their master. But because of the stimulation of the research environment, after the master, they say, no, I'm not going to stop here. They forge ahead. Not only that, because of the, uh, the soundness of their research thesis, the scientists, the, some of the international scientists, and even national scientists, when they discover that, they, they, they make sure that they provide opportunity for such an individual to come back for the PhD work, which will not cause students any, you know, cause student any fun. Here we have, uh, I just uh, deliberately put, uh, this is Mrs. Bello, she's a lecturer in Covenant University, and came to do part of her bench work at Nagra. And while she was there, she got some uh, fellowship, which she asked me to endorse. And after endorsing it, she was given another, you know, some fund to go for another training. You can see the networking now. It was because it, she was working in the research institute. That was why, the, because many people apply for that fellowship, but she was given, and that's why. It is the, the role of research is to provide a platform for you to really express yourself and be able to also, you know, get some other things done in your career. Also, research institute provides practical mentorship for graduate students. This uh, student, PhD student in USA, you know, with a mentor trying to, this is a research institute attached to university. And that's why the role of the research institute is to provide mentorship for graduate students. Not only that, the research institute promotes long-term opportunities for networking among postgraduate students even after graduation. Uh, I recollect I did my part of my bench work at World uh, vegetable center in Taiwan. There was this faculty member from uh, 
uh, Australia, so we shared office. And she it was always mentoring me because he just came for sabbatical leave. After my graduation, there was a conference in US. And lo and behold, he, meanwhile, I have come back to Nigeria. Also, he has gone back to Australia. We had a conference at Colorado State University. And we met at the You know, when, when, when you go forward in your postgraduate school, uh, study and you interact with relevant scientists, then you'll be able to also have a very long term collaboration and also networking. The South Institute provides vital information for postgraduate students as basis for their research thesis. If the, post, the research institutes are there, already they have a lot of research questions, and they are only looking for, in fact, there are about two projects I, we recently, one is still ongoing that I, I'm collaborating with IIT. Most of the projects now, we basically budget for training of graduate students. And if you are not there, if there is no collaboration, there is no way you can be put, you can be fit in. So the opportunities are there at the research institute when there is proper uh, collaboration. Research institutes also provide basic raw materials for their research work. Uh, we will not waste time on this. I've just put just in 2018 alone, we uh, as a national center for genetic resources that conserve genetic resources for Nigeria. We have been servicing most of the universities in Nigeria to provide material, I mean in crop, for research work. From UNN, Unilag, Unilearning, even up to the north, we provide research material. So these are the part of the benefits that uh, the students can benefit from uh, research institute. And uh, also, you can benefit a lot of training. We, we, are, uh, we have opportunity to so, you know, do either part, part, total, uh, part of our this is, uh, research, uh, research ways to achieve the expected goal. And this we, we deal with the university. The university should run postgraduate programs which are relevant to the mandate of research institution. This study was that of the Kwaki student nation that is West Africa. West Africa Center for Crop Improvement, which is Ghana. They are training, they make sure that if they take sorghum, they look for research institute that has mandate for that. If the, if the students want to work on rice, they look for research institute to collaborate. That's why the student, in fact, the PhD student on record time, three years, are able to finish and write a very a good quality, uh, you know, thesis. Research lecturers, Sorry, university lecturers should develop cordial relationship with research scientists to write joint research proposals and carry out joint research activities. Just late last year, a professor who is renowned and presently a double vice professor at the university came to Bajor University. And he said, Yeah, he, he had his PhD in Germany, the university that awarded him the PhD, he only visited four times. The first time was to go and register. The second time was to go and, you know, uh, meet the main supervisor of the university. The third time was going to submit the binded thesis. And last time was to go and collect. You can see that synergy he has in the research is a competent individual that supervises, and that confidence level has been built that the university is no doubt of what that research institute can do. And those are the things that help. And today, he is consulting for FAO, he's consulting for even companies in his own field because of the level of training. So this confidence level should be built. Also, Part of the exercise in postgraduate studies 
to involve short-term visit to relevant institutions. It is very, very important. It may be a difficult thing. I observe now, at least in the last few years, both the Master of the Church, the Master of the Lord, they make sure that sometimes they bring their postgraduate students to our center for one week, sometimes two weeks. It's not just to go for excursion. Excursion is just to see and take notes. But how deep some of these things they need to, if they are engineers, take them to think, if they are educating, if they are agricultural, take them to different, let them spend two, three days and, and familiarize with scientists and researchers there. It will enhance their, you know, level of imagination and the area they want to key in in their future career. Also, the non scientists with the research institutes should be incorporated into the teaching of some postgraduate courses. This will allow them to share their hands on particular experiences with students. And, that, and this is part of what uh, the present center of excellence that uh, the World Bank is funding is doing with the Federal University now to make sure that they pick experts from the research institute and make them to come and deliver lectures. Then also you are so it's very, very important so that they will be able to practically be exposed. Like I've told you, uh, the industrialists, they are complaining, the scientists are complaining. The meeting point is when they are start to develop. That is where the world is going now. Also, universities should have MOU with relevant research that will help them achieve all the goals. Time is done. Let me be a little I will finish. Benefit to postgraduate students. Through detailed research, primary research institution, students will develop critical thinking. Expert well as effective and communication skills. Globally share study from a university with strong research connection is the key to a high quality project. Research experiences are invaluable and no doubt boost the durability long after graduation. I want to start with some employer. They were lamenting most of the graduates that we gather some of the people who come to do interviews, we interview them in interview, we refer them to the next. So, for that's why it's important that these people who are graduate students, at the level of the graduate level, they are not going to make it easy. But at the same time, you know, it's like a pyramid. You now have few people. Contesting for job at master's level, at PhD level, you have you know more opportunities than when you are just having a first degree. That's why it's very very important that we forge ahead. Research experiences are invaluable, and no doubt we boost employability. In conclusion, therefore. I want the student to note this. The research institutions are looking for smart, intelligent PhD, uh, PhD students to inject into various research fields. I remember in 2007, no, 2006, we had window to explore. And there was this chap who came from very, very intelligent. And uh, we thought we'd get a window to the school, but we could not. So after service, we had to go back to the school for teaching somewhere, so on, so to help go to school. By the time windows of, of opportunity came, we, we had to be looking for this guy. And on the part of gold, we gave him job. Within two, three years, Finish his master's, he has written so many papers. Unfortunately, 
We gave him fellowship. We gave him, a, a, you know, study leave with pay to go to U.S. to tie him down. The guy is no more coming. He already has his PhD now. He say bye bye. So, if, if if you are smart and you have relationship with some of these research institutes, I can I can show you. I I, I work with uh, international organization for about ten years. What I observe that when they see that you are smart and intelligent, even when there is no opportunity, they create it. They create windows. I've seen occasions whereby they will see my the scientist will just say, or the, the principal scientist will say, okay, uh, they have not given me a proper now, but I will put you on cash, but you can be sure, relax your mind. And that's why it's very important that we make sure that you do things smartly, and then also make sure that you are focused. In whatever area you you also work hard. Also, you can make yourself a potential research scientist and be marketable anywhere. Don't think locally, think globally. You no, know? think why. That's why you know some people say they don't have job. Whereas some people I have seen recently, some people are moving. You know, almost six, six months they are moving because. Also, please take the research component of your thesis very, very seriously because it will pave ways for your thesis. Yes, academically, you have to know the, the university have their own standard. But to your research component, don't just let me just get my MSc and go. No, when you get to the market, when you relate very well with research, make and I can do job stuff where there is no vision to be prepared. I'm, I'm grateful to God that this university has and there's no doubt in it. But for, for the university to achieve the vision, especially for postgraduate school, we spend also we have to have our own individual vision. My prayer is whatever you are, you know, Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. Can we have a seat, please? That has been a very enriching time. Thank you very much again, sir. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. And thank you, audience, for listening patiently. We are straight away going to ses session two, New Frontiers in Research. And that will be taken by another distinguished Professor, and to read his citation, I'd like to have Dr. Adeyemi Stephen to read his citation. Thank you very much. The Vice Chancellor permit me to stand on the system protocol. It's my it's a privilege to read the citation of uh, one of the guest lecturer, Professor Gani Hobo. Uh, with the permission of the Vice Chancellor, uh, may I request um, that the guest, teller, guest lecturer stand, please. please. Where is the citation? Uh, Professor Gani Hobo is a native of EB Nafe Edo State, Nigeria. Uh, he was born on 28 February 1970. He had his primary education at St. Teresa's Demonstration Primary School, Akure, between 1976 and 1982, after which he proceeded to Oyemekon Grammar School, Akure, Oksa. The same year, he graduated with flying colors in 1987. That same year, he left Oksa and was admitted to the Federal University of Technology, Utah, where he bagged a B-Tech degree in biochemistry. 
in the year 1992. He later had his Master's of Technology and PhD degrees in Applied Biochemistry from the same university in 1997 and 2002, respectively. Thereafter, he proceeded to the Université Pedra de Santa Maria in Brazil for his postdoctoral training in biochemical toxicology. That was in 2005. He had a second postdoctoral training in food biochemistry and toxicology at Technical University, Dresden, Germany, between 2007 and 2008. He joined the service of the Department of Biochemistry, UTA, in 1997 as a graduate assistant, from where he rose to the position of a professor in 2012. He has served as the subdean School of Postgraduate Studies between 2010 and 2011, acting head of biochemistry department FUTA 2011 to 2012, and substantive head of biochemistry department in both Federal University of Oyeikiti 2014 to 2015, and, 2000 and, and Federal University of Technology 2015 to 2017, respectively. Presently, he is the Director of Center for Research and Development, FUTA. Professor Obo has many awards. Among them, Junior Associate of the Abdus Salam International Center for Theoretical Physics, ICTP, in Christi, Italy, between 1999 and 2006. Uh, he received that after a short visit to young, as a young collaborator in September 1999. He was also a regular associate of the center starting from 2007, January 2007 to December 2014. He had attended several seminars, conferences, and workshops at the center. He was a Tua CNPQ postdoctoral fellow at the University Federal de Santa Maria, Brazil, Alex van der Humboldt's postdoctoral fellow in Germany, and Trier University of Applied Sciences, also in Germany. He was also a cast to us visiting scholar in Institute of Nutritional Sciences, that's Chinese Academy Sciences of Sciences, Shanghai, in China, in 2009. He has won several research grants from donor bodies, such as African Academy of Sciences, the World Academy of Sciences, to us, International Foundation of Sciences, Alain Sadavon, on board, Foundation, Concello National de, permit the pronunciation, it's, uh, Spanish, CMPQ for short, and Tertiary Educational Trust for Ted Fund. He was awarded Best Lecturer in 2009 and 2012, and he was the Best Inventor in 2018 at the Federal University of Technology Akure. He has received a couple of other awards, both in FUTA and beyond. He was a visiting scientist to the Department of Life Sciences, University of Christi in Italy between 2003 and 2014, and Department of Life and Environmental Sciences, University Universita Politecnica de Marche, also in Italy between 2014 and 2016. Professor Obo's research works of developing functional food products have become focal points in the search for complementary and alternative therapy for the management of several diseases. This has attracted lots of collaborators within and outside Nigeria. He has published over 300 research articles. Mm. Over 300 research articles in refereed journals, both locally and internationally, as well as several published conferences, conference proceedings, book chapters. It is noteworthy that he is the researcher with the highest citation on Scopus, ISI Thompson Reuters. <laughs> ISI Thompson Reuters and Goku Scholar from his institution as of today. On the national scale, he was recently ranked Nigeria's number one biochemist. 
and second best scientist by Cypher and another independent Scopus based survey carried out in Camfit University, UK. In the aspect of human capacity development, he has trained several graduate students, including 60 master students and 17 PhD graduates who are presently occupying academic positions in their various universities in Nigeria. He has attracted lots of research grants to his university, through which he has been able to establish two laboratories in his institution, the first and the only research laboratory in Nigeria on functional foods and nutraceuticals, as well as the largest single research laboratory using Drosophila melagogia Melalogasta for biomedical research in Nigeria. These laboratories have continued to attract researchers from all over the country. Undoubtedly, Professor Gani Obo has contributed immensely to the life science research in Nigeria with outstanding scientific findings and good human capital development. He is an active member of some professional and academic bodies, such as Nigerian Society of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, Biotechnology Society of Nigeria, Nigerian Society for Experimental Biology, New York Academy of Sciences, World Academy of Young Scientists, and Accelerator for Sustainable Development of Africa. He is a devout Christian and happily married with children. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, permit me to give this to our guest. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I'll be allowed to. Actually, I'll be speaking on, I say what I know to do best. I'll be speaking on new frontiers in research. I use the word, what I know to do Yes, uh, the first speaker has really done. What are we just doing in the world? So, the sum of teaching or sharing. So, what is research? Yes, it's a systematic question to answer a question. Answer it. Yes, a question. Because what I realized today, people just they are not doing People just do data collection. They are not answering any question. There's a problem to be solved. There's something to be addressed. You know, I tell myself, just have 50 tables, 100 figures. What are they addressing? I do. I tell people, with a single table, you may answer a big question. So it's. You know, I know some university they will tell you to hand your masters, you need five That's not research. That is just data. So what we'll be talking today is doing research. I told you is to answer questions. Yes, all those things, the earlier speaker, this has to carry out his These are the usual routine. But today, I will take you beyond the root usual routine. Because you know, people come to publish research impact journal is difficult to do because they are doing the routine thing. The world is moving very fast. But you are still staying on your training you had 20 years ago. No, during my postdoc in Germany, my host happened to be one of the leading food chemists in Germany and is the editor of European Food Research. When I got to Germany, he said, Over, leave this man. No, I came with my own idea and just Oh, I'm an editor. Once I receive 100 articles, 80 are on, on, on 
no any serious editor we want to bridge that move away from what you are doing. So how to move forward. So when you talk of research, there you talk of knowledge generation, knowledge application, knowledge adoption. But for you to have knowledge application and adoption, it depends on the administrators. That will determine if we have a last two. Yes, the earlier speaker said something, which I will not throw more like was trying to talk of basic research. You know, some 10 years ago, likewise in Bonn, we were in a meeting in Bonn. We were talking of basic research, applied research. One of the speakers said something, he said, it would be crazy for you in third world working on basic research because you have a lot of problems to solve. Then there are a lot of problems to solve. That, why are you working on basic research? And even my host, my mentor on grantmanship, by the of God, I won over 20 grants in Italy. He said, oh boy, nobody will give you money to be studying why this paper is white. He said, what we do is to get money to answer, to solve a problem. We cannot address from that money why this paper is white. In essence, many people will not put their money on basic research. They will put their money on applied research. And here you are in third world. We have in Nigeria, even in Omaran here, there are no more issues to address. So why are we looking for what is not there? Well, there are problems. There are problems. So the issue here is, yes, we have applied research, which I will say anybody in third world, we have enough things. Why are you looking for the one in the moon? When people want to ask, what are you looking for? Then the usual story, that is the third point here. Your CV, publish or perish, which is the usual academic diary. That means, but it's a wrong notion because once you become a professor, if it's published or perish, you stop publishing. Yes, I've been a professor, this is my seventh year, and this year, if I even I got one paper last time, I can't publish it. So this issue is not how to become a professor, it's passion. Trying to address a problem, trying to solve problems. So it depends on what drives you. If to become professor, I know when I got to Germany, you know I traveled to Germany when I was in a lecture, I told my host that I have more than enough papers to become professor already. Because then in my university, you require 20 papers, and I have over 50 papers that I came so that you can tutor me on how to do good research. So, yes, you need to be promoted, you need good CV. After all, if I don't have paper, you will not call me. Have you? Yes, so they what do we do research? We talk of multidisciplinary research. No, I, I'm not sure this university do have access for covenant. I'm sure you don't, you're not into that problem. Because some universities are talking of studies of modern day. I'm happy to give you a paper. It's crazy now. You cannot do any thorough scientific research as single. If you have to go to a scientist, you are robbing somebody. Somebody must have been robbed. So, good research today. Multidisciplinary research. Yes, yeah, basic versus applied, quantitative versus qualitative. That's not where I'm really going to. Where I'm going to. Now, how do you select a research? Good enough, we have young people. How? That's the major problem. Some people thought we must do high tech research. We don't have to do high tech research. I said, well, one of my people that is most celebrated most celebrated with the highest citation is just the effect of branching on the just that part of the world. Very simple topic. Because in Nigeria we don't eat raw vegetables. Have we? It today is on high demand. Just for parameters, cocafinol, vitamin C, and pre uh, radical cocafinol. But it's answering a big question. Because what was my argument? I gave a talk recently in one in, in Kuton that most of the data you have outside is misleading. They said vegetable gives you vitamin C, it gives you mineral. But in reality, they analyze raw vegetables. By the time you cook it, by the time you blanch it, the, the vitamin has run away. The mineral has. But they are claiming it gave it to you. But in reality, it's not giving us anything. Most of them have gone. That was all the paper was addressing. That this claim, in reality, in Nigeria, we don't eat raw vegetables. We cook them. Then, 
Pastor Nice. I knew when I came into academic, I was going to be a that one of my major curiosities then, so I couldn't address it when my dad died, I reacted. So for some years, when I had the opportunity of doing this, I want to know why I react to the family. I told some of my staff inside that the only time I knew I fainted was when my mom gave me the money. And I went off. So for several years, my first interest is why did that go up? And I was able to establish. I admire the plant, but I cannot eat it. I know what it can do, but I cannot do it. Personal experience can drive your research. Another thing is that there are a number of interventions. Is it working? You know, sometimes it, let me go about that. You know, something may even happen to you as a child, which you may not come back. Let me not address this situation. Now that I have the skill, let me not address why this thing is doing. That may be what you'll be doing all through your life. You know, I tried, I gave a similar talk sometimes. Some they say, come, I have a serious problem. I've been fighting people in a I've been fighting. You know, I have many of them in my work. I know you are looking at me. Yes, I'm saying it because you are here. That we don't need high tech machine. Kuli Kuli, give us a machine that we produce Kuli Kuli. Give us a machine that we produce Donkwa. Give us, because we have been trying to produce medicinal Kuli Kuli, medicinal Donkwa. But you and I, we not eat Kuli Kuli because we already produce it. But if I know that this Kuli Kuli is coming from the machine, I will buy it. I'll be fighting. Give us, a, because I've been talking to them in Fear Road, we want a machine that will give us don't go. That is a start. You don't need to start looking for the one that will go to space. There's a problem here. Okay, we did something recently during exhibition. This Iru Cube, we produce it. I said, okay, my friend in the engineer, give me a machine that can use to produce Iru Cube. I know in this part of Nigeria, Kwara, they produce a lot of Iru. If you can just have a small machine that those women can use to produce cube. These are what we need. And you will shock as simple as that machine is, it will take you somewhere. Because you have addressed what Nigeria needs is small and medium scale enterprise. We don't need high tech industry. Before you know you would have, these are the research we are talking about. But we are not doing it. We are not doing them. Then, Curiosity, state of knowledge in the field, solving a problem, hot topic for discussion, like that one. I know recently one from my visit was said, oh, there is this type of soup. The sense of food that ate pepper soup, hard fish, is toxic. Let's go and look for it. He's sending this email from fisheries. I have my lab in biochemistry. If actually this uh, fish, pepper soup from hard fish can is toxic, let us find out. An odd topic you may want to add. In fact, there's one I'm trying to address in my lab now because there have been, you know, I take a lot of courses. I'm a visual. In fact, when I was coming, I came to back up. That's why I didn't drink your mouth anyway. <laughs> because I'm addicted to courses. But, you know, as a biochemist, once you're above 40, you don't take more. I take zero sugar. Then the next thing is that this zero sugar is it actually true? Then that is the next issue. Now zero is zero. So that is the assignment I get to myself in the lab. Go and be collect sample and interval to find out the level of reducing sugar. To be sure if the zero sugar is actually zero. Just research. Answering some questions. Then, now, for good research to be carried out, feasibility. You know, I'm only ten from God. When people will write good idea, they go and steal idea. They write good idea. Give them the money, they cannot do the job. That means that proposal is not feasible. You know, I suffered that many years. You know, I like to win ground. So I, will, I, I wrote to IFS many years back. They said, your proposal is too ambitious. I didn't really know the meaning. So when I was in Germany, I wrote to plus for my own. My host used the same language. This was is ambitious. And I said, sir. What was the meaning of the proposal being ambitious? People in Nigeria, you will write this, write this, you want to achieve everything. Just take a small topic and do an in depth study. That's research. But to say, you will go to this place just to have big cases. It's empty. 
cannot answer any question. So, very feasible. Feasible. And the steps, what you need to do, they are very easy. Then yeah? it should be interesting. Interesting. If I, when I tell you this is what I want to do, it should be it should be an effort to convince you why I should do it. Say, for instance, when I want to talk why I should do diabetes, I'll tell you that every family has to send it in diabetes college. Every family, at least one. And I'll give statistics to Nigeria. So everybody says, why we should study on diabetes? Why we should eradicate diabetes? Then it should be noble. What you have done. That's why you do a picture search. Then the exercise is, and it should be relevant. That's one problem many of us have in the world. You are not addressing a problem. You are looking. And that was the problem I have with this. So I, I think at Nigeria Forum, we should have been doing this later. And that, that, that's a description from that day. Where this is, I'm not against traveling abroad. I travel a lot. Most of them are off the country. But there's this training you have. You bring the knowledge you have. Your training there is not relevant to local situations. And unfortunately, you cannot format your brain to relevant things. That's why it's a thing, I don't know if you observe it here. Most people have their food training abroad. They come back home, they will complain all the time. I tell my that they stay in the front seat in Asu Meti. So they, can, they cannot. So you, you know, that's the problem. Relevant. And it's a serious problem. Yes, many of them are going abroad, we are training, they are coming back home, but they cannot solve. Local problem. They are not trained to solve local problems. That's why many times that's why I told my people, don't give anybody food training. Give them split sight. Small year, small day. So that if they come back, they will see in tea. Yeah, current situation in Nigeria. That's it. We have a lot of people. How many of them have been controlled? Yes, I have well over 300 controls. How many of them are in the street? Which is the challenge I'm facing presently now? So now I work less for publication, I work more for patency. That now I want to see my product, what I've discovered in the market. So, this paper, we have it, turnover. Universities, how many of them can we see in the street? I think we should go beyond paper, paper. That was one problem we have in Nigerian University. We have this paper tiger, not paper tiger. But the research you are doing, you cannot see it in the goods and services. So that was the first problem in Nigerian research. Publication. Publication. Yeah, that thing. Re, uh, this one thing I want to speak. I developed a product recently which a company is taking over. In fact, we are supposed to sign a legal document today because I had made up my mind that now, even the grant we are giving now, because I'm the one in charge of grant, is purely on product development. So, my days, antimicrobial property. How does that antimicrobial property you discover, how does it translate to the woman in the street? You have to go beyond doing that. You should formulate a product. But that's our emphasis now. Eh, Anti-diabetics. No, no, no. We are going beyond plants lowering blood glucose. How will this thing become a product that somebody can buy? We have to go beyond, hey, we have done this, I have done this, we have done this, many papers. Moving beyond paper now. I will speak more on that when I get to transitional research. Below average, if, if, yes, obviously. We have university. We, we do a lot of work. We have a lot of professors. We have high number. But it's inverse professor. Nigerian problem. More professor. Normally, there should be a synergy between the university and the industry. New ways of doing research. I say you should in, only the giant. You see, we, most of us, we are cave in. We should think at all. That's one thing I learned. It's in Germany, you go to market, you see all sorts of crazy bread. Bread from potato, bread from yam, bread from this. But in Nigeria, you only have one type of bread. 
they will tell you that but in, they, they do crazy things in Germany. That's one thing I learned. It's not the research. They, do, they, they take risk. You know, if you're even doing it, the doctors will come. This one, the one where they say, this, 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 this. I say, what do you know? Many of you, are, some of them are my students. They are doing graduate studies with me. I said that you are the people that is killing innovation. The fentanyl thing, I was discussing with the visitors. They want to bring somebody. I brought it to Futa sometime. The guy has discovery for HIV. People have been going there. We had to buy HIV. I brought the footer. People were talking of toxicology, toxicology. In fact, the other man said, come. Peter, I use bitter leaf to produce this capsule. If your wife gives you bitter leaf soup, you say, this, is this toxic? Now, this capsule I'm selling is from bitter leaf. But my professors were asking toxicology, say, you are the one killing innovation. So, this time around, we should, we should break to self loop. Try new things. Nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and contentious stupidity, which is the situation in the world today. With all of us complain of the problem, Nigeria is not moving forward. Nobody is doing anything conscious to get out of the problem, either by way of research. And funny now, if you come, I was in a meeting in December where we are trying this uh, 10 years uh, roadmap or whatever. CDMB. I told the oil company, you guys are not funding our work. They are only doing community development. And at the end of the day, we all complain of the problem. What are you doing? There's a problem. And you know, you know, sometimes we have been our brain has been over westernized. I told some of my students, when you travel in the street in Germany, in Italy, you may see you may be seeing the same plant for over 50 kilometers. No biodiversity. But within a radius in Nigeria, you can see more than 100 types of plants. But you are not exploring them. So the man drinking shock, he doesn't have the plant. But you have the plant, you are not able to explore it. Then, but we have to get rid of those stuff. Money drives research. As a researcher, not only that you should be a good researcher, you should know how to attract fund. You know, most of my talk is more on fund generation, getting grants to support research. Because you can't say you have 300 publications, you have zero grants. Then where do you get money to fund your research? If I some people, John Jonah, we will ask for you that you should cite the, the fund. So, as a researcher, I consciously, I tell you that it's not because of the money, because of my CV. I can't claim I have a number of publications, but zero record of grants. So, as a researcher, consciously win international grants. Consciously win local grants. Support. I have to elaborate. But they are all funded from I, None of them. I tell you that the bed does not have a single test tube in my hand. One grant for them. How to fund it? You have an idea. So, whenever I give this topic, people react. The idea comes in. But one of the best things you can share with people, so many people protest against it, that they will steal the idea. So, I tell you that there's something inside you they cannot steal. They can only steal the one you said. So, and what drives research is the one inside you that you cannot express. I tell you, that's what drives research. You can see a topic, you steal it away. When you get to the level, you will crash out. But if that's one that is, that is driving you, that's what they cannot take. Yes, colleagues. So I have this idea. What do you feel about it? I have this idea. You rub mine. Then the next thing you want to ask, do I have the competency to execute this job? That do I have the competency? Then the people will be willing to put money into this one. There's this concept I'm developing at the HIV. Which we are still pushing on using selenium concept for HIV education. So we got to get to know that this time around, doing selenium for HIV management from selenium education. And we have the overcome of that Now, this is a typical review school. 
I used I used to rebuke the IFS. It's so funny. I failed the IFS several times. Later after I see this failure, they say I should rebuke the dollar. In fact, that was the time they said you don't deal with dollars like me. That's it. Later I now call them. So you said I'm a dollar. You asked me to review for you. <laughs> that, can I apply again? They say, okay, you can apply. You now give me the grant. You see, this is some of the questions they have. Is this research problem clearly defined? There should be something you are addressing. You're just doing research. Then, you're looking for the New frontal You are in third world. There's a way, and I'm happy to focus here. Look, my wife was talking of Kelly studies. I told them in animal studies. The problem is that I don't like the way you do your research. You are looking for what is not there. That I wish I'm in animal science. No, I'm a biochemist. We are dealing with human. The risk level is very high. But I, I can afford to kill as many chickens as possible to take that risk. That, I don't know why you guys cannot take risk. Now, these are some things, some things I believe you can do. But you are still looking for alternative protein. That's a crazy thing. I said, that's, a, that's the problem I have with you. You should go beyond the level you are on. How much more the animal you are dealing with? If you will kill them, nobody will arrest you. If one person dies from my trial, they will arrest me. Have you? That, that you, should, you should be able to take the risk. That's what I'm doing. That you should take the risk. Translational research. From bench to bed. I do a lot of clinical trials. You know me very well. So, I'm developing a product. Contact them. We are coming to try transition. That is the in thing now. Translational research. Not just analysis. We have enough analysis. You know, the LSP can say that. Is it ARU for D? Research for development. That, but the only way ARU can be for D is to go into translational. We have a number of antimicrobia, anti this, anti this, anti this. How many of them have become product in the market? That's the level we are moving researchers to now. Not just analysis, not just analytical. There's a problem. Sit down, research it, formulate it, develop it. Okay, this thing, you know, there was time we just did this thing for exhibition in Abuja, special spaghetti for that. We have a number of that. We don't have to see that. Let's produce spaghetti. Let's get an extruder. Let us get this stuff. So that at the end of the day, it's not just go and take this plant. We have incorporated our plant into a product. This is the product. Eat it. Your blood glucose will go down. That's what we are talking about. So today, you see, you know, one of the mistakes we are making, we are trying to compete with U.S. problems different from Nigerian problems. Translational research is one of the research we are advocating today that we should go into. When talking about that is moving from just analytical to thing, and this is the mechanism involved to save our time. Uh, I want to rush to the next thing, which is the need-driven research today. That's what we are talking about. What is the need? There's a need. It's not just sitting down. Okay, this is where my supervisor got to. Let me now continue from there. Let me tell you what I'm doing today is different from what I did in my school. It's very different. I worked on cassava, but at the time I was in Italy, I was about to come home and give a lecture. I gave the lecture. They, were, they clapped for me. I thought I have given a brilliant lecture. Later, the man just came to me. How does cassava look like? That means I have to do When I came back home, I should. Then, but when I said I was doing cassava, he said, are you going to do it for your own cassava? I said, no, thank you. I said, I'm going to my university, but we don't have money. I said, yeah, so no. <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is that there's a need around us in the university. Like the research I'm doing presently, what drove it to me? I drove me into it. This is a guy before I traveled to Germany. I said, that was the day I opened the door on that I want to start working. 
I started from diabetic hypertension. Now I'm covering almost seven pathologies. That we are going deep and deep and deep inside. So there's a need. Water, machine. You see, you know the problem is that some of us want to develop car. Already there's car. You can't beat Japan. So why are you wasting your time? Where you, can, you, can, you can't beat Japan. Why are you wasting your time on that? That's one mistake we are making. I tell my students that this thing, Americans are experts. You can't beat an American in this thing. Define your own thing and do it your own way. It will, it will even it will amaze you that do it your own way will catch international interest. That's the truth. So that's why I say I'm fighting. They say, come. I don't want to come and develop tractor for me. They already have tractor. The woman, they, they don't produce iru in US. They don't know how to use the machine. Have you? They produce iru here. This woman needs the machine. And I can show you, if you reproduce the machine here, somebody in US will start it. Why did they work on several years? Do you know somebody called me from UK? What was the problem? In our description of production, we normally use this a way wrong. If you know where you're wrong. That's he said. Now she wants to do the same thing in you in UK. Must she use a way wrong? Because you claim you use a way wrong in producing your own. So mind you, you do that woman does around. Became a problem for somebody in UK. And the woman doing it in your street didn't go to school. But it became a problem. So need driven. There are needs around. That's, that's why I said we should change our orientation. Thinking big, yes, we go and pick one US, we went like this. Craziness. That's why they reject the paper always, because the fellow knows better than you. But if you create your own, I told myself something like that. That's why they reject that Create your own pattern. The fellow in US doesn't understand it. You know, there was a time just this December, we traveled to Dubai area to let me this guy say, yeah. Those people with flaws, they don't let us emphasize food. Let's leave the pathology for them. When I now came out with the food, they emphasize what they know, they emphasize what they don't know. If I'm speaking on Ogiri, I'm the one that knows Ogiri. They don't know Ogiri. Whatever I tell them, that's what they are going to listen to. So you want to speak to America on there, you are speaking on odd dog. Sandwich. They will tutor you. The man driven inside the new compass uh, academic research collaboration. Just speak on this. That's one thing to boost your quality of education. You know, I tell so I've been telling my students to get us based on There's one mistake we are not getting here. There's something we are not getting here. Those current trees. Jamming US, Japan. They put their phone. Do you think they are crazy? No. When I was in Germany, there's this fellowship for PhD dad. What we realized that most of them in that class, most of them are foreigners. No single German in the class. Yes. And when we got to Germany, some of them, what they do is that there's no way you will spend one, two, three years, you will not drop your research idea. And each day, you are increasing their frontiers of research. So the money they are giving to you, is not that they are crazy. The idea is that come, drop your idea, and go. That's why something like GSPS, Fulbright, Fulbright, we look for the best of brain all over the world. And they need to spend any a month to bring them. Manu Bodian, it's a live offer. You go to grave. And they told us that they wouldn't mind spending, they spend a lot. Because they, when I was in Germany, I supervised graduate students. Because there's no way you will come there and stay in their lab. You will drop what? When I was in, in, in Brazil, my host of the visa when he came to Nigeria, that I brought plant research to his lab. He wasn't working on plants. And that was the major work he does. So by the time you bring five students, these people from abroad, before they go, they will drop their research idea. By so doing, you will increase the frontier. Let me even tell you, I do that. Even in my little corner, if you are coming from that university, what do you do as project? If it's interesting, we start to expand it. So you have, you have added to me. 
I will almost prefer somebody from outside that will bring you idea. So research collaboration. You have to encourage. Not only send, you know, in Nigeria MOU, we only go, they don't come. Let's do something to bring them down. So that, so, and that is one thing US is doing brilliantly well. Most people that dress to research in US, they are foreigners. I was in China. I did this color. Scholars from US will come to China shopping for students, postdoc. They will come, give seminar. Before you know, finish your PhD, come and join me in my lab. Because they are not crazy. It's just to increase the research frontier. So, collaboration. This, I don't want to waste my time on this. Business research. That's what I mean. You know, we in academics, we just thought, let me just publish, let me just publish. One day I will retire and they will be paying me pension. You know, there was a time we went for an exhibition in Lagos, NCDMB as well. You know, no time just came. They said, come, you go to university. You are exposing your information. Is there any crime if the Lord do in the court eh, that this way you can make money, but you are giving all company free information? What am I talking about? Intellectual property. That's one area we are not talking about. That is business research, developing product. If I presently at least that when I went to Germany, I had zero patent. And my host had three. I had to call him. I don't know. There's, I have a problem. So the problem is that you have three patents. I have zero patents. It's that doesn't become a problem. So it's a problem. Teach me how you had three and I had zero. He now taught me on intellectual property. Now let me tell you the implication. Once you get the patent and a company kiss into it, the debt, your children, children come to enjoy it. They come to pay royalty. I know covenant has that covenant. That today is not just salary. And in patent business, in fact, we, we have this data. In fact, you score that US and I think possibly Japan, they are the only leading. And others, including Nigeria, were even far below US. Now people are now getting patent. Patent. But that's one of the major things I'm driving in my center now. That I am not interested in publication. Come. Which product can be patent? And we, oh, we gave the inventor a very beautiful reality. At least 50% of the profit goes to you. So that to encourage you. So this time around, instead of doing research for the fun of it, try to get do a research that can be patent. And I can assure you, in the next couple of years, it will become a major indicator of promotion. No more. Just trying to tell you. Very soon, to become a professor, the issue of patent will now become a strong question. Not the number of papers you can publish. Now, how do you communicate your research publication? Let me just run through this thing. You know, many people don't like me talking about it, but I will speak on it. At, at least I know Covenant uses it. I have from Covenant. You see, there is no way, yes, I've emphasized. The next, how do you communicate your publication? One of days, all you just do is the I can show it as it's getting there, they come back at you. You know, I have this problem more with engineers. And whenever I give this talk, usually engineers will want to fight people in agree. They say, hey, in Greek, what they do is that they can mention the letter, letter and breadth of a uh, leaf and they will publish it. In engineering, it's very difficult. Engineering is very difficult. Am I telling lies? Eh? But in reality, it's not so. In reality, it's not so. I can assure you, if you mention the letter and breadth of food, no good journal will accept it. Each feed has its own trending area. All you need to know is, in my feed, what is the trading area that you align with? That's the truth. 
there's speed. speed. But if you want to stay on what you did 30 years ago, but today nobody is talking about it. And you want to insist that I must accept it. I won't accept it. You know, a guy won on board in my university recently. One of the guys that can say, Professor, but I know you told us this thing. I went to engineering to give a talk. They, they almost told me the end that. I said, come, this is the fact. But the guy said, I told them that. I said, in engineering, there is this modern thing. Because I met many engineers in engineering. This is what they are now doing in engineering field. Not this your wedding and. I said, come, oh, engineering has gone beyond that. Then I said, the guy that won on board, that's the type of research. Each feed, there's a trending area. All you need to do, identify that trending area and align. That's all. That is all. What is trending in my feed? I told you, my training in biochemistry was different from what I'm doing now. If I, if I should stay there, nobody will know me. I've trained 17 PAG in the area I was not trained. That's the reality. It's not in, I, because in the area I was, I left it immediately after PAG because I want to align. And sincerely, I tell people that I cannot benefit more than this. I should give it to myself. But there was a university in Italy. I was asked to design curriculum based on my research. So, visiting professorship for two years, I went there. I designed about 20 topics on my research. So, I designed a curriculum. All I go there to do today, I will teach phytomedical uh, and diabetes. Teach them on this. Just creating something out of my own line of research. I made it cross lectures. Just because. I, so, what I want to speak about is how do you publish in high impact factor? There's open access. I don't believe in it. If I have met people, they are complaining about it. It's like somebody buying donuts. We believe that if you have good journal that will not collect money, that has good journal, if you can do a good journal, sincerely. I was also in Cameroon sometimes, I was testing students in how to win. And all the speakers, they came down heavily on open access. That you want to win Umbod, and you came with open access. You can't win Umbod. So, some journals, like some grant, I got a grant that says to publish this work in open access, and you are going to earn this. But on a good day, why don't you put down dollars in doing good research and publish it? And give it that money to a journal. Put that money on quality research and publish it free. So, our impact factor journal. I'm still talking on that. It's possible. My students, people that publish in Impact Factor 2, they do Impact Factor 1 is good. They are not from the moon. They are human. If you, if you really mean it, you can achieve it. It's just a matter of you being determined to publish. No, this thing, I dare not say it in Futa, they will stone me. <laughs> I dare not say it even in my university. They know my view on it. That you can target it. Like when I became a member of New York Academy of Science, I didn't apply for it. I published a work in biochemical pharmacology. Chemical factor is very close to me. If I made the work came out, they sent ID card to me. They sent a certificate to me that I'm not a member of New York Academy of Science. I didn't apply. But just that, they just saw the article and they felt this guy must be a good scientist. They appointed me without application. So, now, how do you decide this? Because for young scientists, yes, why do you publish? Share your research. But in reality, why do you publish? To get funding. To get promoted. To get a job. To keep your job. Say, for instance, you come to me, I go to your school. So you may have 50 papers, but then one number one. Uh, 
other factor. You don't need to have many. It is even ten. Ten well established and good. With good infrastructure, I will take you see. You know the mistake we are making today? We are thinking of game of knowledge. We are thinking of game of knowledge. You don't need to have many. But few, but published in a very good journal. And let me tell you, every feed has they are leading journal. If you say you are in this field, you see, there's this guy I brought in during my inaugural lecture during my class. If I met him, he's the editor of the Journal of Football Tennis. Somebody told me that this guy has been talking about the and has given us some work in Journal of Football Tennis. I would like to meet him. When somebody just wrote him in Canada, that's can he Later, after the conference, I said, after the conference, we publish all the articles in the Journal of Football. He said, why not? After the whole review process, said the publishing has to be rested, they never thought such a good job could be done. So, what am I trying to say here? Recognition. Plagiarism. Deliberately brought this thing because it's a problem we are facing. Plagiarism. But I'm still handling one. Where the reviewer claim because I'm a editor of a journal, they have to take this one. It's a serious thing. It's a crime. They will send you out of your That's why you don't have to have family. Do a good job. Make a good job. It's a crime. Jason destroyed. Now, why do I need to publish in high impact factor? The only way your article will be well cited, I must tell you, I check my citation every morning. Each day, I, each year, I have my target. That, and to boost your citation. Say, for instance, there are some work you will do, nobody will cite it. You yourself will not even cite it. But there are some work you will do, people, in fact, as the paper is coming out, in fact, how much length is here? There was time we were discussing this. This guy has two papers. Then, as I then, one of the papers has over 100 citations. Just one. He has two, but one has over 100. So it's not a show of, there are some topics that are hot cake. Like in my feed, I'm talking on food. I know anything I say on ginger, on turmeric, on garlic, on soya beans, the whole world will want to read. Anything I say on coffee, because white men drink coffee a lot. I did they work on coffee. How does it affect brain? Anything I publish on that, the man drinking coffee will want to read it. But you now did a work. Something on cassava. <laughs> you publish it in the journal in Ibadan. It's not even online. Probably they produce 100 copies. They gave it to all the authors. So even the guy in the next office didn't even read the article. Who will cite it? That's the problem. Your work. You are the only one that knows your work and the editor. Nobody knows your work. So one of the ways that your work will be well read is to publish in high impact factor journal. That's the time I was doing analysis in January. I also said that before you can use this method, go and produce three articles produced by Elsevier that has used that method. It, it defined the range. It's not, it's not just any three articles. Publish in an Elsevier that has used that method before it can allow me to use that method. They have defined their scope. I must tell you, I just, before you can get your PhD program, you must publish in a paper. In fact, before you can negotiate the date of your diploma, you must first produce that. You can't talk, okay, let's fix your diploma. Because your work must be read and it must be well accepted 
before we go on to face the external examiner. And most times, when you go there to do a walkover, because by the time you produce three, four articles, in part of three point something, four point something, there is nothing to examine again. There is nothing to examine. The whole world have read it. They said this work is good. In this type of journal, in fact, the defense will be a walk over. I told myself sometime that if you spread my thesis, almost every such of my thesis they were published paper. I only put my thesis. Put my PhD. My supervisor made me to be publishing it. So I usually publish almost everything before I compare my PhD. So write your thesis. Already reviewed. Just write it fresh. Then impact factor. Corpus. Yes. I brought spoke of what. Though there are a number of funders, Google Scholar, Public Publish, all those ones, newspaper articles will be entered into the place. Have you? Punch can enter the place. But Scopus, he has some level of restriction. And the best restriction is the people don't want to hear it. As a scientist, like ICTP, I visit there a lot. Any article that is not you will not be able to even download it. They have blocked it. They only reckon with constitutor in this article. So, three or four years ago, they brought 40 of us in the world to come and read. Process of giving grant in two aspects. I read that they selected all of us based on our constitutional article. 40 all over the world. And I just did. So when I met this guy from the guy from Futu, I said, Yes, when I was doing Scopus Frank, you are number one in Futu. I said, I say, You are this. That's it. Because sometimes I do some crazy things. Never am. Best business. Come on, you're juicy, Leonile. <laughs> I will start looking at the profile of each university, the number one, number one. Ah, he came up, whenever I go on accreditation, that was the first job I do, to have a dossier of what is going there. I will not have it. Okay? I know who and who. When I'm so, but Scopus, if I tell my students, it's an article without any Then, Scopus, I recommend to anybody that if you want to publish, not just put it. Want, how to get it, go to their index. If Scopus is not listed, if your is not listed, don't waste your money, don't waste your article. Otherwise, the article will there, it will almost have zero citation for almost 100 years. Nobody will cite it, because nobody will read the article. And now, citation is becoming a strong factor. A strong factor. It, you know, before we are talking of publication, how cited you are. How cited is, is becoming a strong factor. In fact, many universities in the world are doing Many universities. Which is the one I'm also striving to do. You see, I, I, I think, yeah, we, we were in Covenant then. Some of my colleagues, yeah, we came together on a case. He told me, hey, he applied for sabbatical in Malaysia. He was turned down on HDS. That in that university, they said for that kid, I think he's H in there's five, but he had H in four. So they didn't take him. So for you to boost your H in there's, the game now is it's not just that you are publishing, you must boost your citation, and it's not within your reach. <laughs> That's the irony of it. And the only way to do a job. That will interest the world. Why are we doing the research? Why are we doing research if we are not trying to address the need of the world? So if you are now doing the research that is not addressing anybody's needs, nobody will cite your job. That is the implication. So when I did that, I'm just working, I'm just working. But if you are not doing a work that is just you alone, if you care, you read it. I have an article. I think it's fine. And I even publish it in a good journal. But who refuse to cite? <laughs> I have one article like that. I publish in Solar. Let me tell you the So we look at the third ontology. Accepted. But the source is only known to us. The man abroad of 
So there's no need for him to cite it. So, so this time around, you are doing your research. Have it at the back of your mind that somebody, this is your work, must interest somebody. Otherwise, you are on your own. And what is the implication? You may have 100 articles, zero H in there. That means 100 articles not cited by anybody. Because if you look at the graph, is publishing your papers against citation. Papers, number of citation against your papers. So, if at the end of the day, you are just going to the lab, doing work, that's a, research has changed. That's a, I love that topic, to New Frontiers. If I ever told my VC that after giving the talk here, I'm going to give it in full as well. I told my VC because when I was doing the research, that there are many things, especially our upcoming researchers, they don't know. Like Umbod. If they want to award, they use research gate. They use research gate. That's why it's very difficult to win Umbod the recent time. And some people have five or they are not business. Reading, bro, nobody is reading your article, nobody is citing your article. That means you are just a smear activity. So this time around, in designing your research, you have to think very, very well that this work I'm going to do, how does it In fact, most times when I want to give my student work, I say, hey, except if you are the careless type, the lazy type, if you are the sound type, as I know can fly, let us see that some all take. We go into it. In fact, some of them just publish an article. It came out last December. Already he asked the citation for it. So people are they are yet to even give him the thing number. It's just in press, so people are already citing it. People are waiting for the article to come out. So, so that means you have to think very well and design your research in a logical manner that and you know, today is not the day of talking on how to write it's a different thing. So, that is H index. So, I have spoken much about I can assure you, once, if I want to talk of this metric rank, you know, no, when I do people are talking of publishing, publishing, publishing. Now, citation, citation, citation. That's what I have mentioned. I love because I go to their website. I, I rank them. Yes, you see, when they go bumper to bumper, have you? That you see somebody, 1,100 1, citations, you see, 1,099 citations. That, so if you are very careless, the fellow will overtake you. So I love the way we are pursuing them. Look at it. And let me tell you, it's a push rank. What is sent to rank? So it's not just enough. So I think I will just read. This is what we are. And this is the particular research we are. Thank you. Thank you. Another round of applause. Very, very grateful, sir. Thank you. Let's have a seat. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prof. The Vice Chancellor, sir. Thank you for listening patiently. We'll go straight to the third one. We're getting loaded already. We want to have the last dose. Postgraduate program, excellence in operational strategies. And that will be taken by Professor Abiodun. And the citation will be taken by Dr. Ben Caleb Egbide. Doctor, thank you.
the vice chancellor permit me to stand on the already established protocol may i call on professor abiodun debayo to stand and to come forward while i read his citation Professor Abiodun Humphrey Adebayo obtained a BSc honors degree in biochemistry from the University of Calabar in 2000. He later proceeded to the University of Jos in 2003 and was awarded an MSc degree in biochemistry distinction grade in 2005. Professor Adebayo was awarded a PhD degree in biochemistry by Covenant University Ota in 2009. He undertook a postdoctoral study at the Institute of Microbiology Chinese Academy of Sciences between 2012 to 2013. He specialized in plant biochemistry and has been actively involved in the sustainable use of indigenous medicinal plants. His main research focus is on phyt phytochemical, biochemical, and toxicity, toxicity studies of medicinal plants. His research on medicinal plants involves the purification, isolation, and characterization of active compounds from plants. These compounds are in turn screened for anti-cancer, antiviral, antimicrobial and antioxidant properties. Professor Adebayo is also involved in the safety evaluation of locally used medicinal plants using biochemical, hematological and histopathological indices of toxicity. Professor Adebayo, who is a recipient of the prestigious Chinese Academy of Sciences, CAS, and Academy of Sciences for the Developing World, TWAS Fellowship, has published in reputable local and international journals. His astuteness has earned him three-time prize of Covenant University High Impact Journal publications. That was in the year 2010, 2011, and 2012. He also won research equipment grant worth $25,000 from the Ministry of Science and Technology, China, and a phytochemistry laboratory has been set up which is fully functional. The research group won the 2014 TWAS research grant of about $60,000 for carrying out... You can put your hands together once again. for carrying out a study on the preclinical evaluation of novel computational aided design compounds as anti-malarial drugs. The fund also made provision for the award of scholarship to four MSc students. For the Adebayo review for some high impact journals, which include biological trace element research, Toxicology in vitro, human and experimental toxicology. Natural product research, to name a few. He is a grand reviewer with international organizations such as Medicinal Research Council, UK. He is also listed on the editorial board of some international journals, which have, they are based in America and Asia. He is a fellow of the Nigerian Young Academy, NYA and, and sectional editor of Annals of Science and Technology, the Academy Official Journal. Professor Adebayo biography is listed and published in the 30th edition of the Who's Who in the World in the United States. He is a He is a, a member of the National and International Learned Societies, 
He served in the office of the Sobdin School of Postgraduate Studies for two years. Mr. Debayo is currently a professor in the Department of Biochemistry and a dean of the School of Postgraduate Studies, Covenant University. He is a member of the accreditation team of the National University Commission, NUC, to some Nigerian universities. Also, Adebayo is an external examiner to some universities in Nigeria. He is an ordained pastor in Faith at Tabernacle, Kenan Land, Ota. Professor Adebayo is happily married to Mrs. Olufunke Adebayo, and her marriage is blessed with three children. This juncture permit me to hand over the microphone to Professor Adebayo for his lecture. Thank you so much. Please let's be seated. It gives me a great pleasure today, and I'm grateful to God. And let me established all protocols and to appreciate the vice chancellor and members of management of landmark university and the dean of the school of Bulgarian studies here at landmark university i'm excited today that i'm back home again you may not also aware that i was a visiting lecturer here some years ago um, until maybe I had no time again to start coming over while I was a senior lecturer. But let me start also by also making this remark to also appreciate the two speakers who had made valuable contribution, the first speaker and to Professor Obo also. Incidentally, you may, it didn't tell us that we were, both, both of us were trained by the same supervisor, Professor A.A. A. Akinda Musi, and very privileged and astute and international scholar. And I'm sure you also took over the position of the international, the research from him. And I'm grateful to God for that. But my focus today is on excellence in operational strategies where we have talked about the research the institutions that we need to partner with but what how do we take it further do we just accept anything here even at landmark university or even at covenant university no there are some principles, there are some guidelines as students of the postgraduate studies that you need to follow. And some of them have been highlighted, but I'm going to concentrate on other key points and to also motivate a number of us here today that why Covenant University is where it is today is as a result of the commitment towards excellence, the commitment towards drive, the commitment towards being and fulfilling the vision that we had a vision called Vision 10 2022, but Landmark owns its Vision 10 2028. And I'm sure very shortly Landmark will also be bumper to bumper in the words of Professor Obo with Covenant University. So my outline, it's going to be as follow. My outline of presentation is going to be as follow. Then, but let's quickly look at some notable quotes on excellence here. It was Ralph Matson that said, excellence is not a skill. It is an attitude. In other words, you don't just acquire it now and leave it tomorrow. Let it be part and parcel of you. Anywhere you go to, let that excellence spirit be seen all over. 
that's the habitual aspect he's talking about. Also, it was John Gardner that said, excellence is doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. Doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. And it, from the last speaker, you could see his passion. He took his local research to Germany. And nobody, after making that presentation, everybody clapped for him, but it wasn't selling. But until we begin to see how we can connect local, using our local resources, okay, and doing it the way that it will be accepted internationally, and creating a difference, that's what John Gardner is trying to say here. Next quotable quote, and I love this. This is an anonymous, which says, Excellence is never an accident. It is the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligent direction, skillful execution, vision to see obstacles as opportunities. Some may say, oh, they have brought Scopus, they have brought Tom Siruta. What kind of thing is this? It is, first of all, it is advancing you. Because by the time you are out of this university now, you will join the labor force. What they are going to be checking you, they are going to be assessing, it is not the number of publications of some persons, they Google their name, it is Facebook they are seeing. No! Oh, Twitter, social media, who, they will not give you, you will, will not be, you will be found them not employable. So it is helping you, like I usually tell my students, it is helping you, it is helping you, it is advancing you, whether as faculty, even as staff and students, it is primarily for you, because you, by the time you are out of this place, it is your own. Did you get that? It is, yes! He said, vision the university is driving. I say, asking everybody to publish in that area. So, but ultimately, you are the ultimate beneficiary. Because the moment you leave, look, okay, I don't want Landmark again with all the Wahala. Well, whatever you took from Landmark goes with you. But we must understand that. Let's see obstacles as opportunities for us to advance. Let's see any of these, you know, thing we create as a stop, as a stumbling block. Let's see it for our own advancement. Particularly this uh, graduate student, oh, they're asking me to make, to have two publications before I graduate. Ah. See it as an opportunity. See it as a challenge. You can go beyond that. We've had even master students who producing six publications. Before the, before the two-year program is over. Some more because of this drive. I'm not going to waste my time on some of these, but to just situate here that postgraduate studies across the globe is a driver of quality research. And training for higher degree has been pivotal in solving complex societal challenges that have been mentioned by the two previous speakers and um, high level manpower are generated through postgraduate training and in short it is the engine room that drives research every research activity going on in the university is the postgraduate and it is the students that we are going to you are the one we are going to use to do this research yes I'm here now but my students are doing their work in the lab and they are sending the report to me and I'm checking. So yes, they are generating the data. They are generating the publications. But at the same time, the supervisors are there to direct. They are there to guide because you have never been there before. You need someone to guide you. But again, we have also seen, or we may try to address this, what therefore is postgraduate education? We know 
Target education is a form of, stu of study offered by a university or an institution of advanced learning that is academically recognized, known to conduct basic, apply, sponsor, collaborative research leading to the award of higher degrees. We have said that over and over again. So I don't need to really emphasize on that. And um, of course, if it's for postgraduate degrees that are awarded, have the postgraduate diploma, the masters, and this could be maybe masters of science, masters of engineering, masters of arts, MA, MBA. And what have you? When you have the professional masters program also, like MBA, MPH, and um, lastly, the doctor of philosophy. Doctor of philosophy. I'm sure a number of us here, how many of us are currently on the PhD program here at the postgraduate, the postgraduate students here? Good. Do you think it's easy to call you doctor? And let's be informed also that gone are the days when you can become a professor <laughs> without a PhD. <laughs> Somebody pointed to our vice president. He said, after all, he's a professor of law. Why well, he doesn't have a PhD? <laughs> but that was his own time. Well, you cannot even cross if you are in academia. You can't become a senior lecturer. So PhD degree is not something you can buy from the market. Go and check. Maybe Omaro Market, if you can buy that. You must engage yourself to ensure that you do what it takes to get it. And my presentation, like I said earlier on, will focus on some of the things, operations, the expectations from the School of Postgraduate Studies that will help drive your sojourn here at Landmark University. But let's quickly look at some strategic relevance of PhD degree. Of course, this helps to boost research, you have been told. Let me also state here, sir, your sincerely, it is very important to mention that you may never in your lifetime do the kind of PhD work, do the kind of research work that you did to get a PhD. You may never do that again in your lifetime. Only very few people might go beyond, but let me let you know that you may never do that again in your life. So that's why the knowledge gained and acquired at that beginning stage will also foster you, particularly when you are going for postdoctoral studies later on. Of course, they help strengthen the research agenda and promote partnership between universities and businesses, and they promote international partnerships and they help to avoid brain drain and they allow a greater visibility and prestige of universities, and they promote new generation of academics, like we are seeing and today, and they increase available training the university, particularly in some special areas. But all of these will not be without some challenges. There are challenges, I must let you know, and some of them have been mentioned. For instance, issue of funding. You, where do you get funding from? If I must do a quality research work, how do I get the funding, the right funding to sustain that? That's a major challenge. Particularly when you are not on grant or when you don't have a, fellow, a fellowship to attend. You may begin to so, so Funding is a major issue. And the issue of poor supervision. Poor supervision is also a major challenge we have today. Privileged to be external examiner in some universities here and there, but and I've gone to examine students. And I found a master, a candidate I was examining. Using not applicable method. When I got the dissertation to read. I read and read. I think about 10 of them like that. But this particular one was of major concern to me. Looking at the methodology, there is, I, know, I say it is not possible but that you cannot 
infect mice or infect rats with plasmodium begay. It will not stay. I went all that night. I was looting. I said, perhaps there are new things that I don't know. Let's look at it. I read and read through. It was terrible. So, and I got there. The candidate was before me. And I said, candidate. Well, and the supervisors, they were there. I said, but this is a, it's a major flaw in this work. So how did you get your methodology? What methodology did you use to do this? Are you sure? How did you also do your testing to be sure that they were actually infected? So, and that is poor supervision. Because the supervisor must be on top of the game. Slow thesis examination process. A lot of people the student will keep coming and coming and begging for supervisors to examine, I mean, to read the, uh, the thesis even before the examination. So this is also an issue. Then we have the issue on bureaucracy in admission process. We have inadequate facilities and heavy teaching load. Yes, some, of, some persons who are also faculty, they are students, they are at the same time students here. You see that they are the ones teaching virtually some major courses. So that is also preventing them from also concentrating on their PhD program. Then balancing occupation and academic work is also a major. Then we have the family issue, particularly the female. Here, now I had a student that just resumed and, they, and asked me to mentor her. She came with pregnancy. It's good. It's a thing of nature. It's good. We don't discriminate, and that's what we pray for. And now they were to write exam in February. I wrote me, sir. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I can write exam. I said, I do. I know you can write exam. He said, I want to defer. Defer to you when? Yes, you will defer. Granted, I said, but you are you will take one just take a whole one year and just go and take care of your baby before you come. Now her mate had already gone ahead of her now, but she's not seen a baby. I'm still gonna be talking more on all of this later on in my next slide, particularly the female folks and what and what we can do to also support them for preparation and we can go on and on and on and on like that but let's take an international look particularly on annual phd graduate as reported by a cvi in 2013 and look at us there us between 2000 and um, you can see here in 2007 had 60,000 phd graduates in US alone. Then you can see that it climbs. It keeps climbing and climbing. Okay? It keeps climbing and climbing until maybe you have about 75,000 PhD graduate, graduated within in that year, 2011. Now you also see China also following closely. And you can see Canada it's just below the table here with about the five to six million uh, PhD produced within that year. Now, I try to look at data. The challenge with us here is in getting the accurate data in order to also work with and to compare it. But the one I was able to find is that of South Africa. And but even at that, look at the South African story here. Now you can see here the enrollment rates and the number of PhDs graduated. Now, in 2000, for instance, maybe about 1,000 persons enrolled for PhD. Okay, no, 6,000, about 6,000 enrolled for PhD, but only they were only able to graduate 1,000. Also, stranding 1,000. 
PhD graduated also in 2001, but we have that the enrollment roll, uh, rate is going up. But rarely would you see the graduation rate follow suit. Then there is a fundamental problem. And the question we begin to ask ourselves is that why is the number of PhD enrollment not matching with the graduation? This is a major problem with us. Don't also join in the number. Now at Covenant, we had, of course, everyone had three years to do his PhD. Ah, but we found out that some persons were, were staying and dragging and dragging and dragging and dragging. <sighs> Some seven years with all of the things you have. Some already spent it ten years. Ah, we say it can never go on like this again. We made PG School made a proposal to um, submit it before Senate, and we all looked at it and we said, and we also talked about the implication cost. One, each postgraduate lecturer or supervisor is only entitled to five candidates. If you go by the NUC regulation. Meaning that you can, like, you know, somebody's already occupying and buying the time. Good for you, all of them are just there. You mean that you cannot get in more candidate to supervise again. So we now came up with this policy, which Senate approved. That's everyone, irrespective of whether you came in through MVPAD, or you came in through direct PhD, you can't exceed a PhD for more than five years. Except on condonable grounds. And those condonable, oh, maybe accident, health issues, those are the only condonable grounds. So the moment you enroll, we expect to see you graduate. It's a three-year program, but you have been given two years to tidy up because some persons may need to travel to do one or two things there and all of that. So that has already been taken care of. So we stop persons who are on this program and uh, indefinitely. So there are challenges. Those challenges I mentioned could be as a result of that. But let's go on. You can see the gender breakdown of the PhD graduation in South Africa. Now, for instance, you can see the Chat up, it's that of male, then the one down is that of female. Now, how do we increase the enrollment and graduation rate of females in doctoral studies? Now, I was privileged to, I was in, in a training, or in a workshop, where also I also facilitated in Uganda last year. And one of the facilitators was also a very known researcher in Makerere University came and said, what he does is that why others are not taking in female, qualified female researcher in their lab is because of a lot of issues surrounding female, but he is taking them. So what's he doing? He was able to eliminate those challenges that the female folks normally go through. Now, for instance, if they come in to his lab with a baby, he was able to arrange a daycare center for them, arrange a nanny, got them houses, got them, place them in that order, in order to ensure that even the gender responsiveness, particularly as it affects the female folks, is taken care of. So we can see that that's a chart, and perhaps we may need to begin to trend in that area. Next is that, let's look at this. The same chart also shows us the completion rate for doctoral studies. You can see that for the smart ones, they will finish this PhD in two years. Oh, just marking time, maybe because you needed three years to graduate, you graduate in the third year. And I will have about 800 of them in that category. But the average time of completion in this group must be about 4.7 years. Maybe may I, you may now know why where Covenant also drew its five-year residency from. Now, you can see that there are still some 
very some of them who will finish this PhD in 10 years, and some of them will finish in more than 10 years from this chart. But vast majority will complete, particularly 68% of them completed their studies within the first five years. In fact, about 77% of them. So, but you can finish your own in three years. I'm talking to the graduate student, the matriculated students today. I say you can finish in three years. But again, let's quickly look at some of our key postgraduate processes at Covenant. How do we bring them in? Because we have also found out that the quality of students you bring in also matters a lot. If you bring in wrong students, they will be tied down in that program. And we decided to, in order to also ensure uniformity, particularly in grading system, because we have had this challenge when we allowed the department to set questions and they were all manner of issues. Some even scored 49 over 50 in an essay type question. And that became a source of concern to us. So we came up with this model and also looking at what international um, universities are doing, particularly what class universities are doing. That, oh, maybe we go in the route of CBT. We also have GMAT and GMAC and GRE. That's the standard. Now, we said, okay, let's see how to test their knowledge and their quantitative reasoning, qualitative reasoning, research competence, which is also very heavy. You are coming in as for masters and PhD. How much research do you know? Don't come and add to the number. Let's see how you can, you know, come and solve key challenges like the last speaker mentioned. Then we also ask departments to now set their questions, program-based questions, and at the same time, core value base. That's things that have to do with our core value as a university. And this is only 50%, meaning that you must score 50%. Meaning that if you are giving 50 questions to answer, you must score a minimum of 25 of that, and that qualifies you. Then, well, you may score 100%. That does not mean that you qualify it until the oral examination is done. Of course, these are things where the oral examination will take care of, and you must also score 50% in that area. And here, this is done at the departmental level. We bring all of them, make provision for them in the PG school, and about three, four persons in the departmental PG board would come and screen those students. The scores are, have been attached to each of these. They are testing them, the practicality, their research-based knowledgeability in that field of study, and their currency, and their aptness. So these are things we look at. And uh, if you pass that, definitely you may have an opportunity to come into Covenant. But however, transcripts is the basis for admitting any candidate in Covenant. We may score 100%, but without a transcript, you are just, you may not, you won't get admitted. Now, next, after being admitted, you begin a coursework program. And usually, a PhD and master's program is, uh, PhD, like I mentioned earlier on, is a three year program, but you can have two years extra. But for master's, it's a three year program a two-year program, but you can have an additional one year of residence. Now, what are we looking at? You must pass the coursework stage before you proceed into doing the research itself because it's key. NYC, NUC rather, if you look at their criteria, had stated that a student with a CGPA of less than 3.0 will not proceed to the next stage. Yes, by the time you come in, because somebody is already asking now, if i in landmark, is 18 months, yeah, my 18 months is 18 months, now how do I also publish if I'm not also doing that? No, that's not an issue. Now, the moment any student is admitted into Covenant, 
what we do is that we assign a mentor. Mentors are assigned to students who will come in to start the, the reciting, though in an unofficial manner. Because you need to know what are the challenges you are trying to solve also. So begin to interact. And after that, after that one year, mentors may graduate into becoming a supervisor. Did you get that? I use the word may. Because one is also to know, it's like a period of courtship. Can I work with this person? This person I won't see. This person that, would, you know, can I really work? Say, can two work together except they agree? Is that, so that period is a period of courtship for us. See how you can read. What are you bringing on board that is also attractive, that will be, you know, that the supervisor will also see as beneficial. So we look at that. And for PhD coursework, is just one semester course. And seminars are presented. And students, again, like I mentioned, students must have a CGP of 3.0 before you move to the next stage, particularly if you are for master's. Then if you are coming in as a direct PhD candidate or an MP PhD candidate, you must fulfill a CGP of 4.00. Recently, we sent about 50 students away. I signed their letters on poor academic performance because of this condition. So we are, it's, not, it's not business as usual. So you must take this aspect of it very seriously. Then if upon successful completion of this, then you then move to your dissertation stage for masters and you move to um, PhD stage as a PhD candidate. But however, you must defend your work before a panel of uh, headed by an external examiner. But let's quickly look at the procedures for PhD examinations at Covenant University. Number one, after coursework is completed, what we do is that proposals are defended. And proposal must be defended before the departmental PG board. At the department, before everybody in the department, then the, if you are successful in that, you move straight to the college. And the college one is the one that is taking to send it. And that's the main exam. So then that's the first exam. Then the candidate then go for field work. And after field work, post field presentation then comes in. Now I've done my work in the lab. I'm done and these are my results. You present it before the departmental board and the departmental, um, your department and wherever program you are coming from. So that is also a key exam. And once that is passed, you move straight to the college post field exam. And after that's done, your documents are sent to PG school and PG school begin to process the document for Senate. And again, your thesis must be this. Usually we have also introduced some filtering mechanisms to filter your thesis yeah, because we are aware that we are driving a world class status so we have assessment stage before the oral defense thesis has been completed now is this thesis does it have sufficient merit to be examined so we sent to two external assessors to look at it but before then, before your work will even come to PG school, you must have even published your work. Without the publications, without meeting all of those, your thesis will not, is not going anywhere. So it's a hard rule, but we must, the students are, they are doing that, and the number of them are, is paying off today. So these are strategies Covenant University has put in place to ensure we also drive our vision. It's not by mistake that Covenant is the one of the three universities in Nigeria that has been ranked by THE today. We are within the 601 to 800 category of the ranking. Meaning that Covenant is top 800 
today. It is because of the publication and driven by the PG students here that we are where we are. And we also, like Professor Obo mentioned and other persons mentioned, publishing in the right outlet. So if you go and publish in you know, a journal of uh, food science, you won't take it. You can't even smell pages. Your thesis is going nowhere. He had said a standard for himself, perhaps. Maybe the university has not begun to adopt that. That before your thesis will go out, you must show me one publication in a CV or two. Because that's what standard. In order, if you look at what is done there, it, your publications alone is what they combine together. And it forms a thesis in some other world-class university. So gone are the days where you said uh, you must not publish your work before. Uh, if it is published, then it's not known. It's a lie. We can't take that. Because that is not conforming to world standard. So we do this. External examiners after the publications of this and um, so, but the report must come in. At least two positive reports must come in. One, maybe the two of them external, maybe one internal and all of that. So, but we must have two over three before the oral defense will take place. Yes, yeah, somebody's asking now with all of this you have put in place, have you ever seen any thesis not examinable? Really? Because the needful is done. Your work has been published. The editors that reviewed your paper and article have been, you know, have done the job also. So, oh, and those corrections have been incorporated in the thesis. So it's, it will go anywhere, anytime. So we ensure standardization and, and that's exactly what the job of the PG school is. And of course, the oral, oral examination is conducted. And uh, we have also put this here to know, particularly each student, to guide them. Now, because you can't just be, they said to, another session has started, you don't even know where you are. We have seen some students who, five years, they have just managed to finish coursework. Okay, when will you now start the thesis? So, you can measure yourself in the first year, what am I expected to do? When you come to Covenant, when you come, all departmental course work, HODs, everybody's on top and they submit reports. Now, university-wide courses, of course, they also do TMC and EDS and of course, Seminar 1 and Seminar 2 must be done within this frame. And for the Omega semester, we are also looking at results are sent to PG school and, and approved by board and senate and departmental proposal. You must do your pro departmental proposal. Do something. So you, your one year will not be a waste. Then college proposal, we're also hoping that you would have also finished your college proposal. If you have admission for direct PhD. Then your second year, we expect that you do your field work, your lab work, and all other things that you need to do. And you may begin to do and make presentation in your second semester. That's your department post field. And your third year, your documents are then ready, your publications are also ready. Don't you think it's doable? And you do your viva, you get your award in the third year, the last semester of your three year in school. Don't you think it's doable? Don't you think it's doable? Some of us finish within, we finish within three years. Some of, I finished, about three years or less. So it's doable. It's doable. It's doable. Don't stay on need for too long. That's why you have your supervisors there. Staying on need for too long will only prolong your stay. So you need to commit yourself to it. Ensure you are reasoning where you are. If you have an issue, see your supervisors. And there are other senior colleagues around. Take papers, seek for help. Don't just stay there. And next, of course, for MPhil PhD, they have an extension of one more year because the coursework for MPhil PhD is just additional one semester. So that has also been taken care of here. And for masters, and this is what is expected for all our master students and 
of course, first year for coursework. And in the second year, begin to look at field work, bench work for alpha semesters and all of that. And um, in the omega semester, your results should be ready for approval. Now, um, so we have some, also we have designed ways of appointing mentors and supervisors as contained in a regular book. But the question is, who can then teach? Is it everybody that teach in PhD or that will teach it in masters? No. What am I bringing on board? So we have also seen here those who will teach at the PGD and those who can teach at masters here. For masters, um, we have said here between for L2, we must possess a PhD and L2 to professor, but to supervise also. We have modified this lastly in our last Senate, so it's only L1 and professor who can supervise. Then for the PhD, L1 can teach PhD with a PhD to professor. Then to supervise from SL to professor. Now, but again, the question is who becomes the main supervisor and who becomes a co-supervisor? That's an issue. Can someone who has just been appointed and is a senior lecturer today begin to become the main supervisor? No. Even if you are a professor at Covenant University and you have not been a co-supervisor before, you can't be a main supervisor. We have to we have turned a number of them down. So I'm saying this so we can understand when you say, how then do we get people? Get them outside. There are professors outside who have that. Let them and they work under and become co-supervisor and they meet the requirements and they supervise. So that has been the hard way we have gone and it is also paying off today. Now, like I mentioned, you could have only five supervisory quota students to supervise us if you are in the PG cadre. And you can only supervise five students. Or he said, what if I will have more than that? Now, the issue is you write to PG school. HOD or departmental PG board cannot just appoint and say, I'm giving you. No. You must get clearance to exceed the quota per faculty, particularly in that cadre who are qualified to supervise. The whole essence is we want to see how quality excellence can be driven at that work. So you can be very sure when we do that, we're going to be doing that. Now, publication requirement, I've mentioned that we may need to drive this here. Scopus, two scopus for master students and three, minimum of three, and Tom's Ruta or Clarivate Analytics, four PhD. You must give it to us before you leave. Otherwise, your work, you will never defend. Now, but again, we have also slightly, because in order not to kill our own university journals, who we are still anticipating, they will not so enter into the ranking very shortly, become Scopus Index. We have introduced this clause that if you have, particularly for master student, not for PhD, for PhD, give us your three Scopus or in high impact journal in Thompson Ruta, then you can be sure to be clear to go. But for master student, you can give us one, PA, one Scopus or Thompson Ruta and let the other one enter the university journal, based journal. It could be our university-based journal or any other university. Now, this we have done over the years. Now, let me also mention briefly on departmental PG board of examiners. Of course, everything starts originates from the board of examiners within the PG. An HOD cannot just say, I'm assigning a supervisor, no is not. Otherwise become an Ususu thing. I take, I take. No. It's with. So it must be done at the departmental PG board. You can only make a recommendation to the board and say on the basis of the interest, area of interest of the candidate, this is at the people like feel can supervise. And you present it before the board. And minutes of such meetings must be documented and forwarded to the PG school where we look at that. And Again, the members may not just be from SL and above, particularly when we can be within the, those who are teaching in that category. Like maybe L1 who is also a teach um, on the, also teaching in that and the key function, uh, of course, PG contribution, 
PG curriculum development, cost distribution, even to distribute courses, you present it before the board. You take a decision at that board, and such recommendations are made and consideration of PG results. Now, I've also stated this as the SPS board and reporting line. I think this may not interest you then. Maybe when I have another session with the board, I can, I can look at this later on. Now, what are there for strategies that we must imbibe for our operational improvement? I mentioned earlier on, we must get the right candidates. But one, get the quality students to competitive admission processes. Let's screen for intelligence. Research proposals must be provided. In some quarters, in with some other world-class universities, you can't even get a supervisor they can't admit you at the school of postgraduate study without a proposal. So the faculty is okay, now you can come. We have heard here when the, somebody is, again, Professor Obo mentioned that. You ain't, before you can attract any grant or anybody are inviting you into his lab, you must see that whatever you are doing is in line with what the person is doing. If not, nobody will invite you. So also, we must begin to look at research, quality research proposal, particularly as part of our admission screening process. At Covenant, what we do is that they must produce a one-page research concept note. Yes, including master students, because that will help us in knowing where to place the candidate, who to supervise the candidate later on. And in case there are issues later on, when somebody, there is administrative issue, somebody is saying this, some people that will say, but let's go to the original document submitted by the candidate and let's know who well done. Then ability to conduct an independent research. So the candidate must have uh, the ability to conduct in-depth research proposal, or research rather, and departmental PG board must also be involved in the admission screening. Then we must also ensure quality teaching techniques and methods. We must begin to engage problem-based learning. And of course, periodic presentation of seminars is also advised here. Our lectures can be, what I do when I go to teach postgraduate is this. We go the first three, four weeks, one month or two months out of, I teach them. I will give them their own presentation for that course that in most cases end up forming as their continuous assessment. They will present before their colleagues in the, in the, in the, in the, in the class. And I think that's also helping them to be independent thinkers and of course conducive living environment. Thank God for where we are. We must also ensure we preserve and sustain a conducive learning environment and faculty to teach the areas of competence. Don't bring in someone who is not a specialist in that area. He will struggle to teach it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Don't bring in, for instance, when you put me in my area, I don't even, in most cases, I don't even need to look at my notes and I'll teach, I will flow well. I think that's the culture we may need to begin to invite as part of our teaching. And learning. Now, driving excellent research that has been emphasized here today, the hallmark I said of, of this is that of research is that of postgraduate studies, sound research proposal and an adoption of good scientific approach, data analytical tool, and publishing in high impact journals. Then, grantmanship is another way for us to go. Funding is key. You need money to do research. To do Quality research, you also need money. So, master student, PhD students should start now through their supervisors to begin to search for areas of funding. What, you know, present a very good proposal. Yes, they will turn it down many times. We heard. We have submitted proposals where they turn it down many times, but at the end, it was accepted in one other way. So, we must write good, clean, and easy to read proposals. Then let's start little by little. Don't go to, you have not even won $1,000 grant. You are now planning to win $100,000. Start little by little. If you see $1,000 today, apply for it. 
If you see another 500, apply for it. So you begin to gather experience little by little that will also help you ultimately. And then take advantage of fellowships and opportunities, of opportunities, scholarships that are available in your area. Go through those who have done it. Don't be shy to approach them. There are persons in your universities that have also traveled. Let them know what, how they did it. I was particularly excited when Professor Obo mentioned earlier on, said, I went to meet my supervisor or my mentor. Sir, I have zero patent, but you have three. Show me how to do this thing. Because in doing that, we're also on a path to securing that. Now, let me mention this as the last one here. Supervisor, supervising relationship. Very key. It's a lifelong relationship. Eh? You're, I'm sure today he will tell you that his own supervisor is also in that department till date where he's also a professor. We are on, in touch. We are always calling. Even long, how many years? We finished PhD in 2009, but I'm still in touch with him. Send me SMS. We are, it's a lifelong relationship. So, don't discard the lead days of little beginning. Don't see him, oh, it's just to supervise my, uh, my work. And after all, there's nothing else again. Yeah, I can tell you there will be something else tomorrow that will come. So this goes beyond ordinary TC supervision. There is also super, uh, supervisors, of course, they are meant to give you direction. They are meant to guide. They are meant to help you in getting where you have not been before. And we must understand our roles. And let's not go beyond that limit. I'm sure that message is well passed. Now, our own, we have also designed a policy on supervisor supervisor's relationship because each time you need to, here and there, you are settling issues and issues that shouldn't be heard of. And I'm sure by the time we go in all of this, we are going to be where God has planned for us and where our vision will also take us. Now, in conclusion, it is said that excellence is not being the best, but doing your best. I'd like to congratulate the matriculating pioneering PG students today because you will not just do your best, but you will be the best of the best as you have come to one of the best institutions of learning in the world. Congratulations. And a note of appreciation, let me appreciate every other person and the vice chancellor for the privilege given to me. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Thank you very much, Sas. What a session, what a day. You agree with me because of our time? I told you, urgency is energy. These lectures, each of them can take us a day. Each. Please be seated. Uh, my assignment here is very simple. After now, the security to the SPS will come up and give the announcement. Because we had it. We are, we are going to own it. We are going to embrace it. And we are going to run it. It's as if they were here when we were unveiling mission 10, 20, We started with redefining our research focus. That's what the executive director of NAGRA has done for us, telling us about area to go when it comes to research. Sir, we call it. We are going to rejig the MOU that we have with you. So that this individual can have grant, they can do their laboratory work outside this place. We can also have individuals from research institutes to come to this place. Coincidentally, I spent 10 years of my life in a research. I was at the Federal Institute of Industrial Research Bureau for almost 10 years. So I know what it takes. So you are coming back. Wow. Look at the Professor Obo's uh, presentation. You know, I said one thing. 
He said, that lecture is not for today. And I quickly grabbed that. I said, yes, he's coming back. He's coming back for that other topic. Because this is just about experience. We are not talking theory here. It's just about experience. Finally, of course, when he was presented, I have to write, tell him five more minutes. Why? Because Adebayo is our own. He will have separate session with the stu uh, matriculated student. You will still have separate session with us, the faculty, members of PG board. In fact, we will take that we will release you for a whole week. No, that's what we did when we are dealing with DIB and whatever. Omali and his group were here for almost three, four days after Chancellor and the PC of Covenants left us. So you are coming back. It's not as if this is not important. But we know because of time, or whether we like it or not, by the time you are spending four or five hours, then the way you assimilate will also reduce. Having said all of this, we have a culture in landmark. Whoever steps here must be marked. So we have to mark the land. Just to show that you are here, not in just uh, any order. And I want to call the Dean SPS to join me in doing this. Uh, we are going to invite you and make our presentation because you have watered and you are supposed to be watered back. So we want to call on uh, uh, the ED, that grab our own Dr. Aladele. <laughs> because he was saying Aladele. Mm -mm. I think okay, he will tell us. I thought it's Aladele, but the M he was using Aladele, but whichever, but at least Dele is a common factor. Hallelujah. <laughs> so let's give it to him as he comes. So on behalf of our um, university community. So on behalf of the landmark community. We are presenting this to you. Thank you and God bless. Next is our own professor, G. Over. You know, when I saw Ganiyu, it also went with that name, Tajudin. Because when you see Ghani, you will think, ah, where are they bringing this? Then? No, no. Mine is also Tajudin. So we know where we are coming from. And you can see the passion. You can see the passion. Thank you. Nice having you around here. So on behalf of members of the Board of uh, Postgraduate School and also the Landmark uh, University community, we have presented these little tokens to you. Thank you, sir, and God bless. Of course, I'm about Adebayo. So from Adeniyi to Adebayo. <laughs> It's a question of the idea. Crown, crown. It's all about royalty. It's many. So, on behalf of the Landmark University community, we are presenting this award. You know, the three of you will seek come back. We just want to appreciate you with this for now. Thank you and God bless. Thank you.
Good afternoon, the Vice Chancellor, sir. Please permit me to stand on the already established protocol. I want to take the announcements, few announcements for this program from the School of Postgraduate Studies. The application for admission for the next 2019-2020 academic session will be flagged open on Monday, 25th February 2019 for instructor applicants. Kindly inform interested candidates and do you know and other pathfinders who may be interested. The alpha semester examination comes up on Monday, for, between Monday 4th to Friday 15th March 2019 and thereafter the student proposal presentation would commence. The dates for the commencement of the Omega semester 2018-2019 academic section would be Friday 29th March 2019 and the Omega semester lectures would commence on Monday 1st April 2019. This is to notify all high esteemed members of the SPS board that the DSPS covenant of Humphrey Abiodun would like to meet with them by 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, tomorrow Wednesday, 30th January 2019. Shortly after this public lecture, all postgraduate students would be expected to move to the School of Postgraduate Studies to, do, to drop their matriculation covenant, sign the matriculation register, and take their refreshment. Thank you. Shall we give God thanks and magnify him for the privilege we have again today for all that we have received. We are not the same way that is going now. Let's give God praise. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for impartation of knowledge for eye-opening lectures we give you all the glory lord for all the presenters we ask that you increase and multiply their knowledge in the name of jesus christ what we have received let it be useful and take us to our next phase in life in the name of jesus christ for all our new students we pray that this lecture will open a new chapter for them in the name of jesus christ Father, we thank you because the vision of this university in 2028 will be fulfilled before the record time. We give you all the glory. As we go, Lord, let your hand rest upon us. Everyone, let us arrive at our destination in peace. Lord, we give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we share the goodness together? Surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. I have dominion, and I take dominion. Congratulations. Amen and amen. You saw my needs When others saw my faults You forgave 